don't have but a I match. But I thought I came. I came here because I thought I could persuade you to break away from all that, to advance our engagement. Don't you understand how much I want to marry you? And why should we dream away another year? I'm not sure I do understand, Newland. <laughs> Is it because you're not certain of feeling the same way about me? What on earth do you mean? Is there someone else? Someone else? Between you and me? Let's talk frankly, Newland. I felt a difference in you, especially since our engagement. Since our engagement? If it's untrue, then it won't hurt to talk about it. And if it is true, then why shouldn't we talk about it now? I mean... You might have made a mistake. If I'd made some sort of a mistake, would I be down here asking you to hurry our marriage? I don't know. You might. It would be one way to settle the question. In Newport, two years ago, before we were promised, everyone said there was someone else for you. I even saw you with her once, sitting together on a veranda at a dance. When she came into the house, her face looked so sad. I felt sorry for her. And even after, when we were engaged, I could still see how she looked, and... and it... is, that, is that all you've been concerned about? It's long past. Then is there something else? No. Of course not. Whatever it may have been, Newland, I can't have my happiness made out of a wrong to somebody else. If promises were made, or if you feel in some way pledged to this person, even if it means her getting a divorce, then Newland, don't give her up because of me. There are no pledges. There are no promises that matter. That's all I've been trying to say. There is no one between us. There is nothing between us, May. Which is precisely my argument for getting married. Quickly. He could feel her dropping back to inexpressive girlishness. Her conscience had been eased of its burden. It was wonderful, he thought, how such depths of feeling could coexist with such an absence of imagination.